I have used this air cooler for around 7 years. A few days back, its pump is suddenly malfunctioning. So I bought a replacement and this will definitely fix the issue. But there is a problem. When we are filling the cooler with water, it's quite hard to determine the water level by just seeing this mechanical water level indicator. The same goes for when it's draining to a critical level. In that stage, the pump could suck the dust and dirt from the bottom of the tank of the cooler. So I have an idea. A system that senses the water level high sounds an alarm for around 7 to 8 seconds. And when the water level is critical, it also sounds for 7 seconds to notify. This idea not only solves all the problem I have mentioned, but also you could use this idea in the water tank of your rooftop or whatever it is to detect the water level. In my case, however, setting up the water level indicator probes is quite tricky. I have used this stainless steel nut and bolts as a sensor. Three would be enough. One will detect the water level high marked as sensor 2 or S2. One detects low marked as S3 and the last one aka sensor 1 will flow some current through the water so that we can detect that small amount of current by S2 and S3. Of course pure water can't conduct electricity but tap water can because of the impurities and different minerals available in the water. This sensor 1 should be placed at the bottom of the tank which actually flows some current through the water. The low water level indication sensor should be placed a bit above the pump suction area. And the third one which detects the level high could be placed just below the overflow cutout of the cooler body. Ok, for now it's enough for the theory. I have measured all the distances carefully and this is the result I finally get. To keep these values in mind, I have used a PVC pipe and drilled holes in a suitable location. To mount this PVC pipe inside the body, I have designed this part in Fusion 360, printed it and set it on the pipe after winding up the nut and bolts and their corresponding wires. If you are completely confused right now, then all the project details are on my website geekisomo.com. Now we are done with the sensors. Let's talk about electronics. This is the simple circuit I have designed. Let me explain. I have used all the op-amps in voltage comparator configuration. At first, ignore these sections of the circuit. They are just timers. That counts the 7 seconds I have talked earlier. This section is to sense the water level high and this section low. In the voltage comparator configuration, the voltage of the non-inverting input of the op-amp should be same or higher than the inverting input. This way, we can activate its output. All the inverting inputs of all the four op-amps of LN324 are connected with the voltage divider that's tuned to perfectly provide 4.2 volt. Non-inverting inputs of these op-amps will be connected with the supply voltage through the water. Depending upon the water level, voltage will either present or absent on the non-inverting inputs. Following that, the output of the op-amps is completely dependent on water level. This way, I can easily detect water level high. The output of this op-amp is actually inverted. When the op-amp activates, the output here will be off and vice versa. So that if the water level goes below a certain level, the op-amp will turn off that activates the output here. This transistor and resistor network is used to achieve the inverted output. Ok, as I told you, these sections are just timers. Let me explain how they could count the time. Actually both are similarly configured. Here I have used 33 microfarad capacitor that would be slowly charged with the resistor when the output is active. Depending upon the resistor and capacitor value, its charging time would be different. This network has the time constant of 15 seconds at 12 volt. I have calculated this setup could take approximately 7.5 seconds to charge to 4.2 volt that I have set on the resistor divider. This capacitor and resistor are connected with the non-inverting input of the op-amp. And we know the theory, right? When the capacitor is charged at 4.2 volt, the output of this op-amp will turn on. So when the water level drops beneath the sensor, 
this op amp output will deactivate which leads to activate the output from this transistor and that directly activates the charging process of the capacitor as of this op amp output is inverted because of this transistor configuration until the capacitor reaches around 4.2 volt the op amp stays deactivated which leads to inverting output activated meanwhile when the water level drops to a certain degree the output here will stays activated just for 7 seconds this configuration is almost as symmetric as before it just follows the output of this op amp when the water level touches the sensor the output of this op amp activates and that gradually turns on the charging process of this capacitor which leads to activate the output from this transistor for around 7 seconds in that certain period the buzzer stays on that denotes the tank is full last but not least is these resistors whose job is just to prevent the ic pins from floating after building the circuit on the breadboard to my own surprise it works really great so it's time to think up something permanent i take out all the components from the breadboard and solder them one another on a piece of breadboard the wiring is mostly done with the excess legs of the components and in some cases flexible wires have come in extremely handy after around 3 hours of soldering the circuit is almost completed after hooking up the power doing the voltage calibration and double checking the supply voltage between the vcc and the ground pin i have inserted the ic into its socket it's the time for the power supply i have picked up this 5 volt 0.7 ampere power adapter of a old mobile phone by stepping up the voltage at 12 volt with an mt3608 boost converter i could easily power up the circuit and it works without any issues now of course using such a naked circuit inside the water cooler isn't a good idea so i have designed a 3d printed case with three mounting holes so that i can slip the zip ties through them to hold the case in the right place i have also designed another small enclosure for the power supply and the boost converter now you may ask why have i designed such a big enclosure well the reason is i have included a 6 minute on 6 minute off timer for the pump i am not going into too much detail about this circuit right now but the point is the timer circuit increases the size of the pcb significantly anyway i have mounted the circuit inside the housing slid the zip ties beneath it and tied it with the body of the cooler the power supply is also mounted with the zip ties after connecting the power and sensor wires it's time for a test run it actually works i could easily sense of the water level of the tank however setting up all the sensors with a pvc pipe is a terrible idea that i have realized after a few days of usage just think of it i filled the tank and one by one all the sensors and the pvc pipe is drowned after a while when the water level is dropping sensors are exposing to air but the pvc pipe isn't immediately dried out it holds the water which leads to current flow through the water and finally through the sensor and circuit that obviously causes error and malfunctioning which might not be the case for the water full detection sensor because of this area gets time to release the water but low water level detection sensor creates problem the pvc pipe in this section might not get sufficient time to dry out so when water goes below the sensor it will not be detected immediately until this section is completely dried out to solve this problem i have separated the water load detection sensor from the pipe constellation that's it if you are curious how i have provided the 220 volt ac power then let me tell you it's directly connected with the mains no switch and nothing in between when i plug in the cooler this circuit will immediately turn on this is the simplified diagram don't worry i have provided all the detailed diagrams and closed pictures on my website link is in the video description 
By the way, if you are going to replicate such a design, please be careful. AC mains voltage is lethal and extremely dangerous. So we are at the end of this project. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and learned quite a bit about op amps and water level detection. If so, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe and activate the notification bell for future updates. Thank you so much.